giving God yes. that He can forgive us for our shortcomings, even when we, even when we bend out, of, even when we get out of shape here a little right, bit spiritually, right. Amen. He brings us back, and I thank God yes, that the yes. Holy Spirit convicts us. Yes. That He convicts us and brings us back to that place where we need to be. No, it's a need, Amen. But this morning I do want to talk about the Christmas message, but the Lord took me in a different direction this morning, and I know from throughout this world, every church that has given this message, amen, I thank God for the body of Christ throughout this world, amen, amen. but I do want to talk about the birth of Christ, but the title of the message for this morning is, The Greatest Gift to Mankind. Mm. The greatest gift to mankind, and I'm talking about the entire world, people, mm -hmm. whether they're believers or not, whether what kind of religion it was, God gave us the greatest gift mm -hmm. to mankind in order for us to know and understand who Christ was and who He is, amen? Mm -hmm. And we as believers, should we, we should know this automatically, people, that He lives in our heart. Can you imagine... God given us the greatest gift and He's living in our hearts. Amen. Well, He's supposed to be living in our hearts. Amen. But you know what? God, God is so good, people. And, and I want to share a couple of things concerning the greatest gift that God has given to mankind and why He did it. Because God is a gracious God. First of all, He is a gracious God and He is so full of grace. Amen. He is rich in mercy, and he is, and, and and he loves us so much, people, that he was willing to give up his only begotten son. Yeah. Amen. And he is so kind to each and every one of us. Sometimes we don't deserve the mercies of God. Sometimes we don't even deserve the love of God. Sometimes we don't even deserve His grace. Amen. But through all this, God oversees all our mistakes. God oversees every mistake that we made and even the sins that we commit from time to time, knowingly and unknowingly. Amen? But then what I love about God that He's a forgiving God. That He's a forgiving God. Why? Because God loves us and God is love. See, God loves the good, He loves the bad, and He loves the ugly. And there may be some good, bad, and ugly in us, but He still oversees all those things. Amen. 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 See, because why? Because we were, we were created in His image. Amen. <clears throat> and if we were created in His image, guess what we're going to have to do? We're going to have to walk and think and act like Christ did. You know, it's real easy for each believer to say, we have the mind of Christ. It's real easy to quote that scripture. We have the mind of Christ, but are you really minding what Christ is telling us to do? Yeah. Is the mind of Christ really in you? Are you truly walking in love? Are you truly walking in joy? Are you truly walking in peace? Are you going through some long suffering? Amen? Yes. Is the grace of God all over you? Are you walking in humbleness, faithfulness, and goodness? Or are you taking a little bit of self-control? Amen? Because these are all the characteristics of who Christ is. And every so often, every believer, I, I want to say this, every believer in this place forgets about the fruits of the Spirit. Because our flesh and our carnal mind takes over. Amen? And we have to remind ourselves. No, we have to remind ourselves of who we are in Christ. Not only on, on Christmas Day, but every single day of our lives. Amen? Amen? And we think about why God gave, gave up. You know, what are you willing to give up this Christmas morning to get right with God the rest of your life? Not for today only, not for tomorrow, because there's going to be some people in here that are still going back to families and homes and different places, and we're going to be unwrapping all these gifts. Amen? And, and, and that's great. Don't get me wrong. Amen? But there's something greater than a, those gifts that we give to each other. And that's the gift that God gave us. Amen. And we have to remember what God gave up. Amen? Amen. So I want to take you a little bit into, into the Old Testament concerning some of the people in this book that had to give up everything 
in order to follow the Lord's way. Amen. And I'm going to start with Abraham. Amen. What did Abraham do? Abraham gave his, not, not his relationship, but he separated himself from his entire family people. He was willing to give it all up in order to be obedient to God and not knowing what lies ahead. See, this is what happens with us people. Sometimes we don't know some of the things that we're going to have to give up because, see, God has a plan. Amen. No, God has a plan. Amen. See, and sometimes we may not understand the whole plan because God doesn't show us the whole plan all at once. Amen. Amen? But see, but with Abraham, he heard the voice of God. And how many times have we heard the voice of God? Through the word, through a preaching, through a prophecy, or whatever we hear, we hear the voice of God. Are you truly being obedient to that voice? Are you being obedient to the commandment that God has put in our hearts in order for us to move forward? See, He wants us to move forward, but sometimes, you know what? We think about it and we procrastinate. I don't know, Lord, if I want to give up this very thing, because if I do, I don't know what's going to happen. But see, with Abraham, he was willing to give it up, not knowing the Lord told him to go east, not knowing where he was going. Mm. Listen to me, not knowing where you're going, but yet the blessings are there waiting for you. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I hope you guys are reading between the lines here, people. Because, see, God may put all of us in a journey come 2017, and we have no clue what lies ahead. But if you're listening and obeying the voice of God, there's something good that's about to happen. Yeah. Even if you have to go through something. It's like my wife always says. Even if you have to go through the fire, stay in the fire. Right. You're not going to get burned. That's right. Amen? Amen. The, fire, the ring of fire is around you, people, to protect you. Okay. Amen? From any harm, danger, abuse, anything or anyone that would try to bring deception or to deceive you in any way. God will protect you as you go along, people. And this is the faith that Abraham had. That he was willing to go and do exactly what God told him to do. Amen. He was willing to give it up. And this is what I want to say this morning. Amen. And then the Lord took me over and I started thinking about the mother of Moses. When Pharaoh went out and, and gave out a decree... To kill every firstborn, every male child, two years and under. She heard the news and what did she do? She didn't procrastinate. She didn't run away. She went into action, people. Oh, action people. Come on, you guys. <laughs> she went into action. She didn't go. She didn't go seeking for God because she knew exactly <clears throat> what she had to do to protect her child. Amen. Amen. So what did she do? She went and she constructed a little basket and she put tar pit all over it. And she put it into the river. And the river started flowing that little basket down the, 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 the river like this. But his sister went and followed it. And look where that basket wound up, people. Yeah. Come on. No, look where the basket wound up. Because the mother of Moses was willing to give it all up Amen. to protect that child. But listen to me, you guys. I love what God does. He turned that whole picture around. Amen. And he brought that baby back to her arms. And she started nursing that same child who was Moses. Amen. Do you see how quickly God can turn things yeah. around? Yeah. But wait, this is the key thing, people. If you're willing to give it up. That's right. If you're willing to give it up. So what are you willing to give up? Huh? Your ways? Your attitude? Your conduct? Your emotions? Your feelings? Huh? The offenses that come? See, because... I don't know about you people, but I want to get better in what I'm doing. Yes. Yeah. Seriously, people. I want my marriage to get better. I want my ministry to get better. Amen. I want my calling to get better. I, I, I want this church to get better. And it's getting better and better and better, people. 
Let, let me give you this testimony, okay? Of how God can turn things around and bring it back. Oh, you guys, you're going to love this. You're going to love this. Amen. God is good. I'm telling you, this church is, we, we should be celebrating the whole year of Jubilee here in this church. Of how the Lord brings things back. And oh my God, people. <laughs> Listen to me, you guys. I was so excited. Oh, my God. And I told Marcia, I said yesterday, I said, do you believe in miracles, signs, and wonders? She said, yes, I do. <laughs> so I opened up the envelope. Amen. Okay. I opened up the envelope, and God brought it all back. Yeah. Listen to me, you guys. All the finances Woo! and all the money that this church for the Christmas event, God brought it back. He brought it back in one And guess what? He brought it over and above. Amen. I'm telling you, people, God is doing some some things here. We have been faithful. And we have faithful people. And this is why God is showing up the way He is. He's turning things around, people, and He's proven Himself to this church and to this ministry. And people are going to start hearing about it, how God is turning things around because we were willing to give up our time, our sacrifices, and even our finances to give into this program, and God brought it all back. Amen. I'm telling you, people, God is so good. Oh, my God, people. Now we got a surplus. It may not be a big surplus, but everything that we spent, He brought it back just a little bit more. Amen. I'm telling you, God is. Oh, man, He just blew me away yesterday. He just blew me away, Brother Bob. Yeah. Yeah. I'm saying and it, 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 and it happens time after time after time. It just happens. That's why I'm not worried about who comes in and who gives and who doesn't give. As long as God gives. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Well, thank you, Father. And, and, and then I started thinking about Ruth. Oh my God, of all people, she lost her husband, she lost her brother-in-law, she lost her father-in-law, and yet Naomi said, why don't you just go back, go back to your family and, and be with your family and your sister, and, and she says, no, she says, I can't do that, and she was willing to give up her, not so much her relationship, but to go back to her own family. She says, you know what? I don't care where you go, Naomi, but I'm going to follow you because I know there's, there's something great that's about to happen. Yeah. Oh, see, he, ah, yeah, yeah. oh my God, I get excited because I know something great is going to happen. Yeah. I'm expecting yeah. things to happen in such a big way, people. Yeah. Things are going to blow up and blow away. Whatever happens, yeah. man. Amen. And Naomi, t and then and, and then Ruth began to beg her not to tell her to go back. Amen. 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 And he says, no, no. He says, wherever you go, I will go. Whatever you eat, I will eat. Amen. And your God will be my God. Amen. And as soon as she said that, God heard it. Yes. Yes. No, my God. Your God will be my God. Amen. And as soon as she heard it, she knew that she was in for something. Two, two, two widows walking through the wilderness, and yet through all this, listen to me, listen to me, walking through the wilderness, and God is protecting them all the way. Yeah. To get back to that place where God had already predestined for them. See, it's like Sister Louise was talking about Wednesday night. There is destiny in our lives, people. You just can't procrastinate about those things that God is placing in your heart. There is so much more to our lives than what we see right now. Amen? Because, see, from day to day, you don't know how God's going to show up. You don't know how God's going to bless you. You don't know how God's going to turn things around in your life. But whatever you don't get, up on God. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And I started thinking about Elijah when he when when he was out there plotting his land and, and, and cultivating his land 
and, and minding his own business and all of a sudden here comes the prophet of God, Elijah, and he throws the mantle and it falls on him. All of a sudden the anointing came on him. And what did he do? He gave up. Listen to me, you guys. He gave up his livelihood. He took the oxen and he took the, the very thing that brought life into him and, and, and finances to him. He took that plow and he cut it up in pieces and he made a fire and, and he sacrificed that bull that he had and he invited the people and he was willing to give it up, people. Amen. No, he was willing to give it up and follow the man of God. Oh my God, people. I hope you guys are picking up on this message. Because see, if God can give up, how much more are we willing to give up those things that are holding us back, those things that are pressing us down from time to time and those weights that hold us down? My God, people, come on, we're Christians. We're not baby Christians in here. There's not one single baby Christian in here. We should be already at that place of maturity. Of maturity, people. Maturity, people, to know and understand what the Word of God says to each and every one of us. Amen? And, 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 and even Paul himself, giving up everything for the gospel and for the sake of the church, you think that this man didn't go through some stuff? Yeah. Oh my God, he went through so much stuff, it's not funny. Right. But he was willing to give it all up for right. Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Because not only did he see Christ, he heard the voice of God. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God, people. It's like, a, and I'll go back to this, what are you willing to give up? In other words, people, what are you still holding on to? No, what are you still holding on to? See, because it's like t I tell you guys from time to time, God can't work with a mess. He can't bless you if all that mess is still inside of you. Because, see, God knows if you're still holding on to grudges. God still knows if you're still holding on to offenses. God still knows if you're still holding on to unforgiveness. He knows these things. Oh, you may speak it, I forgave you. But why is it that every so often you bring it back up? Yeah. That tells me you haven't forgiven. Right. Am I right or wrong? Right. I'm right. I know that I'm right. <coughs> Amen? Amen. Because there's been people in my life too that I've been hurt by. But you know what? I don't care to talk about it anymore. And every, every so often that lying stupid devil brings those thoughts back into my mind and I start talking about it. And I don't want to go there because it holds me back Amen. from doing the things that God has called me to do. Yeah. Amen? Amen? So we're going to have to press forward, people. We're going to have to give up some things in life whether you like it or not. Because if you don't start giving these up, guess what, people? God is going to start pruning you. Amen. And then God is going to start chastising you. And you don't want to go there with God. Amen. Especially when we have the opportunity right now to let go and let God. Amen. 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 We have the opportunity right now to let go and let God work with us and through us to get us to that place. Woo. Look, there's so many people that I can talk about in this word. And, and look at everything that all of us in here right now have been through in 2016. Don't hold on to those things. But Pastor Bob, you just don't understand. <coughs> it hasn't been settled yet. And I still have to do this and I still have to do that. Well, yeah, take it before the Lord. Amen. He'll take Amen. care of it. Amen. Right. No, the Lord will take care of it. Yeah. Don't try to fix things on your own because all you're going to do is mess it up. Yeah. Yeah. How many times have you messed up this year by opening up your big mouth? Yes. Huh? <laughs> Come on, we can all raise our hands to that. I go fast. We've said things that we should have not said. We said, oh my God, and we regret it. Yeah. Yeah. We regret about the times we get into arguments with people. And the words that come out of our mouth. Amen. The regrets. That's right. I never should have said that. That's true. My God, especially when you have a, a husband and a wife and you're arguing about this little thing and it turns into this big old thing. Exactly. Exactly. And it wasn't even worth talking about. Yeah. Yep. And yet we have regrets about it. 
Amen. So we're going to have to let it go, people. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to have to start giving up our selfish ways. Yeah. Look, you can take all the selfies you want to see how beautiful you look. I still don't get it why women pucker up their lips when they do it. What's up with that? Why do they do that? No idea. What are they trying to... Are they trying to throw something out there? I don't get that. I don't like taking selfies. Man, I already know what I look like. Uh, <laughs> Amen? Amen. Amen. And, and, and I think about this, and I think about the woman with the issue of blood. Think about this, people. I, 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 the Lord was really speaking to me about this one incident, this story here about this woman. Through all the years, she was bleeding, bleeding every day, every day, every day she was bleeding. And finally she let go and she gave up her pride. That's and right. when she saw and she heard that Jesus was coming back, mm -hmm. my God, the word of God, that she fell on her knees to the lowest part of the earth and she touched the hem of his garment. Yeah. 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 Oh, come on, people. Yeah. you got to get to the lowest point of your life. Don't yeah. get there. Yeah. Don't go to that place. You don't have to go there. Amen. Amen. But see, this woman had no choice. This woman had to go to that place. That woman had to go down to her knees, even down to her face, to get healed. Right. I hope you guys are reading between the lines. Amen. Yeah, amen. Because sometimes, people, we're going to have to go there. Sometimes we're going to have to humble ourselves. Yeah. Sometimes we're going to have to say, I'm sorry. Sometimes we're going to have to forgive one another. Amen. From the heart, just don't speak That's it, mean right. it. That's right. Amen. Yeah. So you are going to have to give up some things, people. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Because I don't know about you, but the Lord has really been putting a message for 2017 for next Sunday yeah. concerning. Okay, I'm going to give you a little bit of it concerning the changes that we're going to have to make. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Are you willing to change? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Are you willing to change? Okay, I'll give you a little bit more. Changes will come when changes are needed. Mm -hmm. Amen. And the changes are going to come, people. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. But I don't, don't want to go into next week's message. The Lord already started speaking to me about 2017. Amen? Because there will be a lot of changes that are going to be coming. Amen? Turn over to the book of John. Chapter 3, I'm going to go into the Christmas message, but I wanted to share all that with you. Amen. Of what it means to give up certain things in life. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. Amen. John chapter 3, starting in verse 16, he says, For God so loved the world yes. that He gave, okay, that He gave His only begotten Son, yes. that whoever believes in Him, should not perish but have everlasting yes. life. Mm, yes. Do you see the promise that God has given us right there on that last word? Everlasting life? Mm -hmm. Huh? But you gotta believe it. Amen. 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 Yeah. But you gotta believe it. Yeah. That whosoever believes it says, not just anybody, but he says, whosoever believes it will have everlasting life. Yes. Amen. And that is a promise from God to yes. each and every one of us. Amen. And that's the gift that God gave to mankind, His only begotten Son. So this is what I'm saying. What is the most valuable thing that you own right now that is in your possession right now that you would be willing to give up? Not sure. Yeah. Think yeah. about it, people. Yeah. Is it your yeah. silver? Is it your gold? Is it your blink blink? Is it your car? Is it your house? Is it your marriage? Is it your house? Is, it, it could be anything, people, but what are you willing to give up? Amen? I'll tell you what, the only thing I don't want to give up is my salvation. Yes, yeah, man. Yes. Yeah. That is the only thing that I will not give up is my salvation. Why? Because my salvation is the key and the entrance to heaven. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? And when you know that you know that your salvation is what's going to get you there, but there's also a price to pay to keep that salvation. Yeah. Amen? And you know what it's called? It's called obedience. Yes. Yeah. You're going to have to be obedient to the things of God, 
Not just on Sundays or Wednesdays or Thursday mornings or whatever. We're going to have to be obedient to the things of God every single day of our lives, people. Amen. Whether we like it or not. Amen. Amen. And when we get to that point in our lives to know and understand if God was willing to give up His only begotten Son, what exactly are you willing to give up? See, God's not asking you to give up your marriage to follow Him. He's not telling you to let go of your house or your job or go and construct a cross and start walking across America. He's not telling you to give up all those things. He's just telling us to give up our ways. Yeah. Our fleshly ways. Amen. Come on, people. Amen. Crucify the flesh. Amen. No, Amen. crucify the flesh and see what happens. Amen. No, seriously, crucify the flesh and see what happens in your life. Yeah. Let go and let God start working something new yeah. in your life. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Amen? Because that's all we have to do, people. Yeah. Yeah. We have to remind ourselves that we're Christians. Yeah. We're blood bought. Mm -hmm. Look, God God paid a price. Yeah. A price that you don't even have to pay mm -hmm. a single penny for it. Mm -hmm. and, and and yet he was willing to do all that in our behalf. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mercy. Mercy. And here we are acting sometimes like non Christians. Mm -hmm. Have you really given up the flesh? Have you let it go? No, have you let it go? See, we're all guilty. Come on, don't act like you're all holy. Don't act like you can walk on water because you can't. Amen? Amen. Because we're going to have to let go of, of all these things, man. You know what? You see one thing, you hear one thing, and all of a sudden, if it doesn't bear witness with you, there you go. You want to start rocking the boat. You want to start rocking the boat. Hey, pretty soon, man, you're going to get so seasick that you're going to get so sick. I fall off the boat. Amen? So we're going to have to give up some things, people. Amen, that's good. Whether we like it or not. Hey, God is going to hold us accountable, and we are going to be more responsible now because every time you open up this book, I don't care what chapter, what story, or what study you're doing, God is going to require that you follow the same principles. Amen. Just don't read it just, oh, I got into the Word today. Mm -hmm. Well, so does the devil. Yep. Right. And he knows the Word better than all of us. Yep. Amen. Amen. He quoted Scripture to Christ. Yep. He did. He did. And he continues to do that. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Amen. So we're going to have to grab a hold of ourselves this year more than ever, people. Yeah. And we're going to have to make some changes. No, seriously, people, we're going to have to make some changes. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Yeah. No, seriously, we're going to have to make some changes in our lives yeah. in order to get lined up with His Word. Yeah. You know, you, you know, it's like I tell you guys from time to time, do you know how many blessings God has in store for us? Huh? And they're just waiting for us? It's like I'm telling you, with Abraham, Abraham, no clue, had no clue that he was going to be the father of many nations. First of all, he didn't even have a child of his own. Yeah. And look how old he was. Yeah. yeah. But look what God did yeah. with him. Yeah. 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 He went through some stuff. Yeah. Because we all know as we read it, we know what Abraham went through. Yeah. And he put some people through some stuff too. Abraham wasn't perfect either. No. But God did still see his heart. That's right. Yeah. Man, it... <clears throat> And if God can work with your heart, yeah. and if He still sees some goodness in there, He yeah. can work with that. Yeah. Look, it doesn't take that much for God to work with you. Amen. No, seriously, it only takes just, you know, it's like like the Word says, it only takes uh, the, the seed of a mustard yeah. seed. That's how much faith we need. Amen. And sometimes we don't even know we have faith yeah. because you're not willing to step out. Ooh, come yeah. on now. Amen. Look, I, I've told you guys this from time to time, from January to December 31st. Don't limit God and what He can do. He'll show up on the last day. Amen. Look what He's done for this church on, and this ministry all year. Look at all the events that we have had. Look at all the people that have stood behind this pulpit. Look at all the words of prophecy that have come forth. Amen? Look at everything that has taken place, construction-wise or whatever. Guess what? We're still in the black. 
Amen. 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 Oh my God, yeah. Jesus. You know what that does for me? That tells me that I've been a good steward. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And if you're, and if you're faithful with the little things, oh yeah. my God. God started speaking to me. If you're faithful with the little things, Pastor Bob, He says, I'm going to reward you with bigger Amen. things. Amen. Man, I'm waiting for those bigger things. <laughs> Man, because I know that I can handle them. Amen. I know, I know, I know that I can handle them. I know what it takes to put things on paper. I know what it takes to put things in order. Man, I'm telling you. <laughs> and and he has found this ministry faithful. Amen. And there's a lot of faithful people in here. Amen. Don't let the enemy come and rob you. Mm-mm. Don't come don't let the enemy come and put thoughts in your mind about this person and that person and that person. My God, if you keep your eyes on the Lord, oh my God, if everybody was to keep their eyes on the Lord, oh my God, people. Do you know what we can do? Do you know the impact that we can make? Huh? If we're all in one accord, one mind, one spirit, huh? But see, it's like I'm saying, people, we're going to have to give up some things. We're going to have to give up some things. Amen? And a lot of people don't like giving up things. Man, are you crazy? You want me to give up boy? what? You know how long I've had this pair of shoes? You want me to give away my coat? I just bought it. <laughs> my God, people. And there may be some things that God is going to require of each and every one of us that we're going to have to give up something. Something that's probably dear to you. Something that's close to you. Something that you value. Amen? Remember what the, what the, what the Word says in the book of Matthew 6.33? It says, why do you worry about all these things? God knows that you need clothes on your back. God knows that you need food in your belly. He says, why do you worry about all these things? Look, if we can take care of the birds, how much more are you worth to Him? Huh? But what's He telling us? Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added. Unto you it says. So if we continue to seek out the things of God and His Word, and if we give up those things that we need to give up, look, I can go into the Christmas story here, people, and tell you about how God began to speak to Isaiah yeah. 730 years before Christ came into being. Yeah. Why was He? Why did I? Why did God come and speak to Isaiah 700 over 700 years before Christ? Huh? Why didn't? Why wasn't Christ born when when God was speaking to Isaiah? You know why? Because the people were not ready to receive right. the gift that God had to give. Yeah. To give. Are you ready to receive those gifts that God has to give? Are you ready? Are you in line? Because these people in the book of Isaiah were not in line. They were not ready to receive the promises of God. And the promise of God was the child. He started speaking to Isaiah. Twice. In chapter 7 and chapter 9, he started speaking to Isaiah about the man and, 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 and the Savior of this world. And he was going to come and save the people. Can you imagine what Isaiah must have thought? Well, Lord, he says, we need salvation right now, not 700 years from now. Yes. But see, the people weren't ready. Yeah. Oh, I hope you guys are picking up. Amen, amen. Yeah. See, the people weren't ready. That's right. Are you ready? Yeah. Mm. No, are you ready? Yeah. No, this is for every individual here. Are you ready to receive the true promises of God? Yeah. That God has lined up in your life? Yeah. Huh? Because you're never too old to go out and do the things that God has called yeah. you to do. Right. No, you're, and you're never too young either. Amen? Amen. See, you, we don't know what God's going to do in 2017. I'm believing that He's going to do bigger and greater things than He did in 2016. Not only in our personal lives, but also in this church, in this ministry. Amen? Look at I, I thank God that one day, just that one day, huh, Jacob, that we went out to the city of Ontario when they were having that Christmas festival. Only a handful of people went out. And all we did was pass out cards took some names and everything, just that one day that we went out 
And look what took place. Amen. Amen. Can you imagine if everybody gets on board? Come on, right. come on. Huh? You think that God's not going to provide the provisions that we need? Yeah, amen. Yeah, that's right. Come on, you guys. Right. How many yeah. times does God have to prove himself to this church? Wow. Over and over and over. See, I don't have to be begging no one in this church. If the Lord puts a, 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 a check in my spirit, go and talk to the people and go and tell the people, we're going to start another fund for this cause. Don't oh, There he goes again asking for more money. There he goes again. He wants to build another fund for this and for that. Hey, look what the Lord has done. Huh? Fifteen salvations came to God. Amen. Glory. Because a handful of people had enough faith to believe. Amen. And all the people in here had enough faith to believe with us. Yes. Look what took place. Amen. Oh my God, can you imagine next year? Yeah. Right. Huh? Woo. Man, I, and I knew it was going to happen. That's why God had already prepared us three months before to knock this wall down yeah. so we could have the room. And look what happened. Amen. You think that God didn't give me a vision to do this? Huh? And He provided all the funds for Him? Amen. <laughs> and we owe money to nobody? Amen. <laughs> That's God, people. Amen. See, and, and when, when all this was happening, I started thinking about Abraham not knowing what lied ahead, but he was faithful. But he was faithful. Amen. But see, Abraham was willing to give it up, yeah. to let go of his father and his mother. Yeah. You, know, I, 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 you know, he could have gone back every year to go visit him, but he didn't. He never went back home. He never went back home. He never saw his father and his mother again. You know what it takes to give up your family? I know what it took for my wife to give up. She left her mother. She left all her sisters. She left all her nieces and nephews. Because she was willing to give it up to come over here and start a new life. And look what the Lord has done. Amen. Now we've got a bigger family. We've got a family of guys like Sister Linda was saying. Right. My God, there's nothing greater than church family. Amen. Sometimes we're closer to each other than our own personal family. Right. Because they may not believe the way you do. Right. It's okay. Sooner or later they will. Yes, yes, yes. Because the Lord says that you and your household shall be saved. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So don't give up on your family, people, and don't give up. Amen. Don't give up. See, there's certain things that we do have to give up. Amen. But don't give up on your That's family. Right. Amen. Amen. Don't give up on your sons and your daughters. Don't give up on your marriages. Don't give up on your religion. Don't give up on this church. Amen. Amen. Man, I'm telling you what. You know what? It <laughs> goes beyond measure, people, of what God has done here all year. I'm so grateful that we did not give up and throw the towel in when people were writing us off. And, and, and my CPA... I went and met with him during the year, and he says, he says, Pastor Bob, he says, how do you do this with this? He says, because I'm not willing to give up. Amen. Brian, he says, I'm not willing to give up. He says, I don't know what you're doing, brother, but keep doing it. Amen. 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 <laughs> Serious. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I, I have enough faith to believe. Yeah. Yeah. My God. For the little things and the big things. God. Amen. 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 And that's what we that's what God wants from us. Yeah. Give up the mess, people. Yeah. Because it's the mess that's holding you back. Yeah. It, I, I'm serious, watch. Try it. Yeah. And just take it one day at a time. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. When you hear a bad report, turn it into a good report. Yeah. Yeah. Go before the Lord. He says, Lord, yeah. you know what? I can't handle this, but I know that you can. Yeah. And start interceding. Yeah. Start praying. Yeah. Man, I'm telling you what, me and my wife, we have been praying for the last two weeks, maybe three weeks, every day, and, 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 and it may be for an hour or two or whatever, but we've been praying together. We turn off the worship music, and God has been answering prayer. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Prayer works. Yes. And we're not giving up. Amen. 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 And I don't want you guys to give up. Amen. 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 So I'm going to end that with this, people. Because you know what? We all know the Christmas story. Yeah. I don't have to repeat myself or stand in front of a fireplace. <laughs> <laughs> you we know it. Yeah. No, we know the Christmas Amen. story. <laughs>
For God so loved the world that He gave up His only begotten Son, that whosoever would believe in Him would not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. 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 And that's the thing that God did for each and every one of us people. So, sure. so when you go home back, when you go back home today, or when you lay your head back on that pillow tonight, think about it. Lord, change my ways, Lord. Yes. Lord, change my ways. Yes. Don't let me get so don't don't let me be so quick to get offended. Yes. Because the offenses are going to come. Even Jesus told us this. Yes. The offenses are coming. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. But be a good cheer, he says. Be a good cheer. Yes. Rejoice. Be yes. glad. Yes. Yes. For if they prosecuted the prophets before you, mm -hmm. how much more are they going to yes. prosecute you because of my sake? Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Good word. Right. Let's stand up and pray.